My name is Steve Sikora. I'm part of the Bosch Logistics Operating System team here. Um, and we welcome you to the Mid-American Trucking Show VIP Breakfast. This is the second annual VIP Breakfast that Matt's actually put on. We're honored to be able to host this for the second year in a row. Um, last year, we had a great uh, opportunity to uh, host the initial event. We had uh, executives in from Schneider National, Amazon. Amazon, actually, a representative is, uh, is here in the audience today. Uh, and then uh, the CEO of 10th Street um, was also in attendance. This year, we have a, a great crowd and a great discussion forum panel that I'll introduce here uh, in a second as I go through the agenda. A couple of administrative things that I'd like to cover first. So. <clears throat> You have the great opportunity to register on the Bosch Logistics Operating System platform. As you do that and you complete that registration, please vis visit us at our booth. I believe the booth number off of memory is uh, 65410, and that is in the West Hall. When, once you vis visit us there, you'll receive a free jacket based upon your registration. So uh, please do that. Take, it, take advantage of that opportunity. Then there's a, a, another opportunity to, uh, once you do that, you'll be entered into a raffle and have the opportunity to uh, win a Bosch tool set. So uh, just a couple of things that, you know, we wanted to, to do to say thank you for your attendance here this morning. All right. So today's agenda. Today's agenda, we, we have... Um, several individuals that will talk a little bit about the, the industry, some of the challenges. I'll welcome Luke Hugel up to the stage here in a moment. Um, and Luke uh, is uh, the leader of, of our Bosch Logistics Operating System team. He'll walk through, he'll walk through some of the industry challenges and kind of give you know, an overview of, of the landscape and uh, introduce the rest of the team. Stephen White. A, a leader of uh, um, a Geotab will discuss the state of the industry. We'll have Winston McGinnis, um, who will talk about uh, fleet management and, and telematics and how, and, and how um, Cameramatics is, is helping shape and mold the, the telematics in industry and enable fleets to operate in an efficient manner. Mark Shevchuk. Uh, CEO and, and leader of the uh, AMOS uh, transportation management team. We'll, we'll talk about how transportation management systems will uh, help enable uh, fleets to be able to execute against their business needs. So now I'd like to introduce Luke Hugel. Luke Hugel uh, is a, a long-standing executive uh, with, with Bosch. He is the president of the Bosch Mobility Platform Services team in North America. Luke has a, a significant background in transportation and logistics and has been uh, a leader within the Bosch organization for approximately 15 years. So welcome to the stage, Luke Hugel. Thanks, Steve. Good morning, everyone. Last year when we started this, I didn't know what to expect. Right? First and foremost, we walked into a trucking show, and I'm going to do the same thing this year that I did last year. Raise your hands if you thought Bosch Power Tools when you saw Bosch hosting an event. That's the first thing you thought of. All right, put your hands down. Raise your hand if the first thing you thought of was Bosch Appliances. That's usually number one and number two in most environments, but I'm hopeful here today. Now raise your hand if the first thing you thought of was Bosch is a global mobility player. Bosch is one of the largest mobility companies in the entire world. Raise your hand. All right, we got a long way to go. <laughs> but that's okay, because we took your feedback from last year's event. There's half the fruit and double the amount of bacon. So we're setting you up right for the next three days of mats. We'll start at that point of why Bosch and why are we here. Uh, our organization actually started before the automobile was even invented. Robert Bosch was a guy that opened up an engineering and mechanical shop 
in downtown Stuttgart almost 140 years ago. So our organization literally grew up with the auto industry around the globe. We have been in the United States for over 127 years, literally growing up with the industry. In total, we are in over 60 countries, and I'll get to some of the facts and figures that show just how big we are and what kind of presence that we can bring into our industry. But it's really important to start at the beginning because it wasn't just some guy and we kept his name on the wall because it stuck. The values and the organization were set up over 100 years ago and that culture is still relevant today. And it is a relevant story for me to tell before I get into why is Bosch a mobility player? Because we're bad at talking about ourselves. We're really good at engineering, really good at manufacturing, really good at providing solutions that enable critical success for customers. We're really bad about talking about Bosch. And so that's where I want to start. We are one of the world's largest privately held organizations, which means we can take a long-term view in everything that we do. We didn't get into transportation and logistics just on a whim. We don't chase quarterly shareholder meetings. We don't have to do that. We're able to invest billions of dollars every year into research in meaningful projects and meaningful products that can make the markets in which we operate better. Another thing, 92% of our company is owned by a charity. That was set up by Robert Bosch before he retired from the organization. And that ownership structure will remain in place until the end of Bosch's time. And this is fundamental to why we've been in business for almost 140 years. I mean, if you think about a company that started in Germany in the 1800s and has been in the US for over 125 years, been around the world in many, many countries for over 100 years, there's a hell of a lot of challenge in doing business in that environment as a German company. And we've had to, to rely on that culture and that foundation of long-term view and doing what's right, not doing what we can to make a buck that has allowed us to stay in business and grow and thrive. And when I say stay in business and grow, how big are we? When I talk about Bosch being a major mobility player around the world, last year we had almost $100 billion worth of sales. We, as I said, are in over 60 countries around the globe. We have almost 450,000 associates in our organization. That's a significant amount of power to bring solutions to every market in which we operate. So yes, we are a power tool company. We are an appliance company. I personally think we do make the best dishwashers possible. <clears throat> but we are, at our core, a mobility company. 60% of what we do globally is mobility. And so what does that mean? Well, every single vehicle that you drove in or here to Louisville, every single vehicle you passed on the road, every single vehicle you will see for the next 10 years will have Bosch hardware, software, and systems in it. We are in every single vehicle on the road. And I don't mean just passenger cars. I mean also commercial vehicles, light commercial vehicles, all the way up to class eight. Bosch is a world leader in powertrain systems. And it doesn't matter what kind of powertrain. Diesel, gasoline, powertrains of the future, electrification, and fuel cell. We do that. We know how the vehicle starts and stops. We know how the vehicle brakes and steers. We know the electrical architecture of every single one of your vehicles because we're part of that. In addition to that, the connectivity of your vehicle out into the world, we do that. And this is our right to play in the transportation space because we know so much about the vehicle that's at the core of transportation. We can't move a person 
or a good from point A to point B without a vehicle. And we know that vehicle, in many cases, better than the OEM that puts their name on it because we're the ones that are developing the systems and connecting those systems together for them. And because of that, years ago, we said transportation is a market in which we can bring value. We know so much about the core, the heart of that transportation, the vehicle itself, that we can bring value to that industry. And so that's why Bosch is here at Max. That's why we are hosting a VIP breakfast, and we have a booth, as Steve indicated, and we're giving away a bunch of jackets, and we have a platform that we'll talk about. But that's why we are here at a truck show, because we know the truck. So enough about Bosch. Now let's talk a little bit about the industry, specifically about the challenges, some of the challenges that we're facing today. Because it's one thing to talk about solutions, and we're going to go out into the show, and we're going to see for three days hundreds and hundreds of opportunities for solutions to make your businesses better, make them more efficient, make them more cost effective, better chrome on the vehicles, and all of these things. But we can't ignore the challenges that we are facing today because that is so fundamental to today's operations and today's business. <clears throat> so I have a few of them here. I just want to highlight a couple. I'm not going to give a, a presentation on current economics or the state of the industry. We're going to hear some great things from Stephen White a little bit later. There are other speakers that that's what they do, that's what they research on a daily basis. I just wanted to make it very visible and very apparent that we understand this. If we're up here talking about technology, we have to understand the challenges that we're facing today to be able to put the right mindset around what technology can do. And so it starts just very clearly at the very top of we understand, the industry understands, the challenges from a margin standpoint. You know, rates are getting, continue to get squeezed. Payment terms continue to get extended. Inflation is driving up the cost of some of the commodities that go in just to maintain the vehicles. In addition to that, we still face driver shortages in this industry. You put challenge on top of challenge on top of challenge, and it creates an environment for more less than savory practices. Double brokering has increased in a challenging environment. And that's a real, real problem for the industry. I referenced out here in the show hundreds and hundreds of solutions that will help us make a fleet's job better, help to work through some of the challenges that we're facing. Most of those solutions today start with data. And Bosch has been a significant part of that, helping bring more data out of the vehicle. And you know, I said, all of the different components of the vehicle that we're a part of and the connectivity of the vehicle to the outside world. So vehicles are getting smarter. And as vehicles get smarter and fleets get smarter, there's more data that's generated. And there's more data that gets generated, that's a heck of a lot of ones and zeros. And what do you do with that? And it's not going to go away, it's not going to decrease, it's only going to continue to increase. As the, every year the vehicle gets smarter and smarter and smarter. So that can be intimidating. Because as Steve indicated, I have some experience in the logistics space. I, mean, I was a business guy in school. I was not a data scientist. Those didn't even exist. So if you put ones and zeros and raw data in front of me, I can't do anything with it, except look confused, get frustrated, and then try to find somebody that can make sense of it. And that's a lot of what we're facing in the industry as the amount of data increases, so does that perceived complexity and the amount of technology and what do I do with it, especially when that what I do with it is coming at me from 10 different sides every single week with someone saying, I have a new solution for you that's going to help you and manage your business. 
how do you look and evaluate not only that one technology, but how does that fit into my business? That's a huge, huge challenge, and it can be complicated. And so it is easy to say, well, you know what, I've been managing my business with a phone, computer, and some really smart people and great relationships, and so I could keep doing that. Or you can embrace that technology. You can become a data person, and I don't mean that just flippantly. I don't mean that, okay, everybody now we're gonna, after breakfast, we're gonna go take a crash course in generative AI, and so we're all gonna be data people before the show opens up. It's not what I'm talking about. But what I am talking about is embracing data to use it for your advantage. So that doesn't mean knowing everything. You don't have to. You don't have to. But if you embrace it, and say, okay, I'm gonna make the commitment to be the data person in my organization and not just say we got an IT person over here or I have a CTO over there and they're the ones that worry about the technology. But if we say, I'm the fleet manager, I'm the owner, I'm going to be the data person and I'm gonna show that in my organization, it's not that hard. It's a mindset and if you do it, Everyone in your organization can see the value in it. But what it takes is jumping in. Here's the good news. It's not jumping in and doing it alone. There are, where I said, hundreds and hundreds of solutions that are out there in the show and that you're contacted with, I'm sure, every single week. There's only a couple handfuls of those that are critical pillars to your business. Think of it like a house, the, the foundational elements of your business. And those are the ones that you focus on. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we even have some speakers that are integral into those critical pillars that can talk more about those. But I'm talking at a very high level here. I'm talking telematics. I'm talking about TMS. I'm talking about maintenance management. These things that are absolutely essential for your business, those critical pillars of your business, and those are the ones that you focus on. Those are the ones that you say, okay, I want to understand the tech in there. And you don't have to do it alone because there are people behind that tech that are really, really smart. And if they're good at what they do, they're the ones that establish a relationship to enable your business. So they're the experts. You just have to embrace it. And if they're not doing a good job, if you don't like the tech in those core elements, those foundational elements of your business, then change it. Change it. Find somebody that does. Because I promise you they're there and they're the ones that enable that technology that can then enable you to become a data person. And they're the ones that can help your organization to become the data organizations. Because there's a significant amount of research that does show that data is not going away. And so eventually, the phone and the computer and the relationships are going to be significantly disadvantaged to the organizations that can embrace technology to truly make their business better. So that people behind the tech, that's the critical element. And truly, if they're not there or the relationship isn't strong, find somebody else. It's painful to switch out a TMS, I know that. I've dealt with that 20 years ago. It can be painful if there isn't a good relationship with the person that's providing the, the hardware for telematics and the services around that. Find the relationship that fits for you so that they can enable your business and you can become the data person in your organization and your organization will follow you. So what we're going to do, I'm going to invite the other speakers to come up. They're going to talk about their world in those core pillars that I was referring to. Then I'll come back up and I'll talk about what Bosch is doing, kind of put a roof on top of that house to connect those. Because what's critically important is focus, I'll say it one more time, to focus on 
only those important elements. The rest of it, the, you can do the, implement these three technologies and save half a percent of operating costs. Those things are important, but leverage those core elements and those guys that are providing those core technologies to integrate that for you, to help you do that for you. So you don't have to try to do it yourself across hundreds and hundreds of providers, but you have a handful of relationships that are so strong that can enable your business so that you can become the tech people in your business. So I would like to invite to the stage, first Stephen White, VP of Geotab. Winston McGinnis, Senior Director, Cameramatics. And Mark Shevchuk, CEO and co-founder of Amos International. All right, these guys are gonna go through in that order. They have great presentations and insight to provide you. And as I said, I'm gonna come back into it and talk about how Bosch is putting that roof on top of these core elements of your business. Steven. Good morning. So first of all, I wanna say thank you very much to the Bosch for the invitation to come speak this morning. Um, but most importantly, I wanna thank the carriers in the room. Who's, who's with the carrier? So outstanding. So give yourselves a round of applause. Because without you, none of us would be here. So we can't do what we do without the carriers. So very, very important. Um, let alone everything in this room is brought by one of your trucks, so thank you for that as well, that we, that we do. So I'm Stephen White. I'm the uh, AVP um, for, for Enterprise Sales for Geotab. So what does that mean? So I lead up a, a team of uh, very qualified, much smarter than I am, group of people um, that go out every day and help fleets utilize data in a more efficient way. So one of the things I want to be able to you know, talk about today is the state, of the, the state of the industry. But before I get into that, just give you a little background on who Geotab is. Some people in the room may be familiar, some people aren't. Um, but we're, we're a company in our 24th year. We're a privately owned company. Um, our headquarters are out of Oakville, Canada. I'm from St. Louis, I'm not Canadian, so I'm not gonna be saying A, um, not on purpose. So um, we, we'll, we'll clear, clear that up real quick. But the, uh, the, the company is privately owned. We're pretty much family owned and employee owned 100%. So it gives us a uh, very good strategy in the, in the market. We're able to take a very high percentage of our revenues and put it back in the research and development. So we're always able to improve the product. So usually about every quarter, we're coming out with new features all the time within our, within our ecosystem. What does that mean? Well, as, as Luke was saying, data, and I think there's a famous actor, Matthew McConaughey, um, who's got a commercial author who says data is the new gold. Um, I actually should sue him because I said data was the new oil years ago, and I, they, they somehow copied that. But it, it's, it is critical in doing, doing business. Um, but before you know, I really kind of get into the current state, I want to kind of go back and look at you know, what, what's coming up. So I'm going to talk about 2023. Um, I'm going to give some predictions of this year. Um, and then I also will we'll finish by talking about safety um, in, in real time and what, what that means, one of the most, one of the most critical uh, pieces that, that, that's out there. So kind of going through, you know, in 2023, some of the, you know, the, the, the biggest stories out there. Whoever's a Patriots fan or Tampa Bay fan, I'm sorry, Tom Brady finally retired. Thank goodness last year. Um, Silicon Valley, First Republic Bank, Signature Bank, unfortunately all failed, um, which was a uh, detrimental piece to the uh, banking industry. Twitter, it turned to X. So we'll see where that goes. Taylor Swift. Swifty, yeah, there's a Swifty in here. I work with three of them, so that's all I hear all day long. But somehow, Taylor Swift has managed to get more popular. I don't know how that's possible. 
but um, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. And being from St. Louis, kind of close to Kansas City, I think he's dating somebody from the Kansas City Chiefs, I can't remember. Um, then, of course, unfortunately, we've got the war in the Middle East, um, and then what's going on in the situation in Ukraine. Um, and then we've got more political stories than we have time to talk about. I mean, this has gotten, well, ridiculous would be a nice way to say it. So, in 2023, you know, what were some of the, the, the things that we've really heard from our, from our customers and from the industry? Um, the, the biggest thing is, how do I become more efficient? And most of that efficiency is derived by how am I using my data? Um, you know, inflation is hurt. Um, inflation just keeps going up and up. Um, I know there's definitely two different sides of the story we keep hearing. Inflation is stagflation, we've got inflation, I've heard deflation, which is definitely not true. Um, but, you know, to be able to go in and see how is my fleet being able to run more efficient? You know, how do I reduce my fuel usage? How do I reduce my maintenance costs? Um, are very critical to what the efficiency of my operations are. If I can save money in fuel, if I can save money in maintenance, I can put that revenue, those dollars, into other areas of my business that will help me grow rather than being an expense that we do. I also want to determine what's the right size of my fleet. I'm be able to utilize data. You know, what is the utilization of my vehicles? Am I utilizing them 100%, 90%, 80%? Do I have five trucks in the back that never move? Um, you know, those kind of things are very key, and that's where data really comes into play with this. And then secondly is the safety. You know, we can really help improve your safety program by using telematics. Um, and then also in conjunction with cameras. Um, cameras have gotten to be from, you know, kind of a brief conversation a couple of years ago to an absolute main conversation today. A lot of that being derived by the insurance companies, a lot of that being derived from acceptance. Um, when I say acceptance, a lot of that's from the driver's standpoint. When we say cameras, we like to say the word sensor because drivers do not like the word camera in my face. So there's a forward-facing sensor. Um, and as the drivers have adopted and accepted the usage of cameras, it's become critical to their livelihood. I'll give you an example. So if you have a, a driver who's in an accident, they know it wasn't their fault. Well, if they don't have a camera or they don't have the telematics data to prove that it wasn't their fault, guess whose fault it is? The driver. Absolutely, 100% of the time. If there's unfortunately a fatality, it's the driver's fault, it's the carrier's fault, the carrier's gonna be paying a lot of money, regardless. So, um, I mean, it's incredible. The insurance companies, they'll just fold over. If there's an accident, injury, you've got millions of dollars that they'll just put out well, guess what? You're going to end up paying for it. Your rates are going to go up immediately, and you're going to be paying that two, three, four million dollars, whatever the payout was, over that course of the next ten years. Insurance companies aren't losing money, um, but with that camera, it can save that driver, and that's where the words really start to get out. Where drivers are very reluctant. They think you know you're going to be watching 24/7. It's like really, we don't want to watch it. We're only going to watch it when it's critical, and they understand it's really saving them, and it's saving the carriers and the adoption rate is, is skyrocketing. So that's a really, really key point that I really want to emphasize for, for fleets. One of the, um, the, the other parts that we have too is sustainability. So sustainability, you know, has been a mainstay talk for, for several years now. In, the, in the, the trucking industry, of course we want to be sustainable. We want to use the least amount of fuel we can to be able to save money. I, I've never met a fleet that just likes to take barrels of diesel fuel and light it on fire. But unfortunately, that's a projected image of a lot of people out in the public or in government agencies that they, that they see. If I can improve my fuel mileage by 5%, 10%, that'd be fantastic, right? Of course. So that is where using the data, using the analytics that the data can create can really help to improve those areas. And so sustainability is not all about increasing fuel economy. It can start in little, little pieces. Um, it's, you know, I always tell people, you know, make a reasonable goal. Because one of the things with sustainability, you know, we think it's like, okay, I gotta go to 100% electric trucks by next year. 
they're three hundred thousand dollars a piece. I need a megawatt charger, and there's not a megawatt in my town, let alone in one charger, to be able to charge this truck. So it's just not feasible. You don't have to do that. Start small. Start with okay. Let me analyze my fuel usage. How can I increase my fuel economy two percent, three percent? Start at a very reasonable level, whatever is reasonable for you, to be able to do that. Um, what can I do to re reduce miles? Am I taking the shortest, most efficient routes? And, and being able to you know, navigate your drivers that way. So that's a, a very important part with sustainability that I always wanna, wanna cover because we all hear about you know, hydrogen vehicles and electric vehicles. Um, they're great, they have their place and that's a way we're gonna, gonna bring a more sustainable environment. But it's not the 100% solution. There's a lot of, a lot of ways that we can, we can start doing that. Um, you know, routing is a big, a big part of it. Like I was saying, you know, being able to reduce those miles that you're, that you're traveling is, of course, going to burn less, less fuel. Another big talk of 2023 was, you know, enhanced collision detection. You know, in conjunction with the, with the cameras, we can also utilize accelerometer data with vehicles to understand where impacts occur on a vehicle. Was it a front impact, side impact, rear impact? Um, did I hit the loading dock too hard? That's why I broke my kingpin. Um, those, those happen all the time. So we're able to record that. And once we get into you know, a potential accident, we can record it at very high rates uh, of speed. Um, to give you an amount of data collection that Geotab's getting in, a, in an average day, we collect over 18 billion, that's B, points of data a, a day on average in our, in our ecosystem. We've got 4.2 million devices worldwide now. We're in 38 countries um, with offices. We, were, we operate in about 138 different countries um, in all seven continents. And yet, it does include Antarctica. We actually have an ex exploration uh, team right now with uh, National Geographic in, in Antarctica um, ut utilizing us. So it's quite interesting. One of the other most important things in 2023 that came up is our the safety center. Allowing you to benchmark, and this is again utilizing data and analytics to be able to benchmark your safety for your, your fleet. So once we started benchmarking and you're able to actually look at and see quantitatively what your safety scores are within your fleet, we've seen an average decrease of accidents over every million miles driven of 17%. A 17% reduction for every million miles, which is phenomenal. But again, it's analyzing and utilizing that data. Um, it's been amazing looking at you know any of the carriers. You, know, you put your hand up earlier. You can really recognize the importance of data. That's why you've turned into a technology company and you're not a trucking company. Um, it, it's been a, amazing the transition the last I don't know five six years of seeing the trucking industry go from you know, utilizing very little data, if any, to being the largest consumer of data on the planet. They are running companies as fleets are running on data. Um, the trucks are rolling data collectors. It is absolutely incredible what, what's being, being learned. So let's kind of jump into um, 2024. I'll give you some, uh, some of the Parts are going on, and some of the, the predictions we have. But one of the um, you know the, the big things going on right now is you know like the um, the, the clean truck check with with CARB. That's definitely a, a, an important part, a very hot topic right now. Um, thankfully, they moved the time frame from July until January first. Um, the biggest reason is that most people just weren't ready for it. Um, we've been in the certification process for several months now. We're expecting to get certified um, within the next few weeks. Um, but a lot of people haven't. Um, they haven't been. We don't want to be the only one. You know, a lot of people would be like, oh yeah, you'd have a competitive advantage if you're the only one. We don't. We like fair competition. Um, and it just wasn't right for the, for the industry to have, you know, possibly one, one provider to have six months without everybody else being in there. Um, and it just, you know, it was carb, you know, say anything else, else with it. The other big thing with this year, it's pretty easy to project for me, is it's an election year, of course. So, you know, there's a lot on the docket. Um, you know, a lot of the questions right now are sitting around interest rates. You know, for any of the, the business stakeholders, you know, what are they going to do with rates? Are they going to cut them? 
Are they not going to cut them? Um, you know, this month, we actually have an expiration of the emergency banking lending program um, that, that was put in place. So that's going to be, be quite interesting. Um, another big prediction I have, which is this one's going to be pretty easy, is the advances in, in artificial intelligence. They are rapidly improving. It is incredible what we're able to do with AI. Um, we're able to make either analytics and insights that would have taken years within days or weeks now. It, it, it's absolutely amazing. We are starting to utilize AI um, in ways that will you know, absolutely way, change the way we're doing business in the next year, year or two. Um, so it's, it, it is quite incredible. Luke made the comment about data scientists. So give you an example. So I started with GeoTab eight years ago. We had two data scientists. That was our extent of our data science group. We have 126 data scientists on staff now and still, and still growing. If we could find more very qualified, skilled data scientists, we'd probably have that doubled. Um, that's that's the, the rate of the consumption of data is, is going. So that makes a big, big point to it. And then lastly, one of the, the biggest things I want to do is be able to go through safety. So one of the biggest things with safety is we want to make sure not only we have a safe driver, but we want to make sure that driver has the safest truck that he can get into before he ever hits the road. Um, one of the things I've seen, you know, we, we've probably all seen, you know, I was talking about cameras before. I've seen a lot of the camera providers will have video snippets of, of videos of drivers falling asleep or going off the road. And I, I spent a couple of weeks in Australia last year, and they have a, a, a actually a regulation, it's called chain of responsibility. From the CEO down to that driver, everybody in between is responsible to have the safest vehicle, the safest driver that's put on the road. And I know we all want that. We all want, that's what we do. Nobody like purposely puts somebody that's unsafe on the road. So I want to clear that up real quick. But the, the big thing that they do is they really value life. And I'll give you an example with that. Is every day in the United States, we've got umpteen thousand accidents and fatalities that happen, right? An airplane goes down, that hits the news. But those cars didn't hit the news. We don't want anybody to get an accident and have a fatality. And when we see the videos of those camera providers, we see the guys falling asleep and the, the system beeps at them and wakes them up, that's a tiny bit of the answer. What we really need to do is make sure we get that driver off the road. Go take a nap for two hours. Because back to the liability and these nuclear verdicts, so many of those can be prevented by that. So again, using technology, using the systems we're able to get, if we take a lot of that one step further, we can save a lot of those lives, save money. If the load's late and we gotta pay a couple of thousand dollars, man, that's a lot cheaper than paying three, four, ten, hundred million dollars in some of these nuclear cases that we've been, been hearing lately. So that we'll, that we'll have. So no, that doesn't jive with what's on the screen. But, uh, all right. So with that, I'd like to conclude. Thank you for your time, and I'd like to introduce Winston to the screener. All right, thank you. I'm not quite as elegant as uh, eloquent as some of these other guys, uh, so I have my big notepad here. I also pictured a uh, podium for some reason, so <laughs> you guys will have to excuse me with that. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Bosch, for having us. Uh, we're very excited. My name is Winston McGinnis. I'm the Director of Sales for North America with Cameramatics. Uh, that picture is me with a little bit more hair. Uh, as you know, Bosch LOS is doing a phenomenal job bringing the fleet management and operational logistics to your businesses. Cameramatics is one of the premier partners, and I'm going to show you how we are championing vehicle technology, improving driver experiences, and uh, overall providing your company with more efficient data solutions. So a uh, brief overview of who we are, Mervyn O'Callaghan and Simon Murray. Uh, Simon was supposed to be here. He'll be here a little later today out on the floor with us. Uh, those guys launched Cameramatics in 2016 with the goal of building an in-house 
proprietary connected video fleet safety solution. They each have over 20 years of experience in the fleet industry, dating back to 2004 when they had a company called eDrive Group. Uh, they were contracting installations, uh, support service for fleets. Uh, we've had tremendous success in Ireland and the UK, uh, along with an unprecedented growth here in the US. We're a SaaS platform that has been recognized and continuously addressing inadequacies of the existing camera and telematics industry that's out on the market today. Podium would have been nice again. <laughs> Um, we are an easy to use, comprehensive, scalable solution, and we partner with mixed and diverse fleets. Regardless of your size of fleet and needs within, we have a solution for you. And I believe I need to remember to do that. Our hardware and software streamlines operations across all vehicle types, including your powered and non-powered equipment, automating processes such as driver coaching, road accident prevention and reporting, first notice of loss, vehicle maintenance, workflow tasks, and uh, delivery tracking on top of your basic and in-depth GPS telematic needs. By enhancing the safety, improving the effectiveness, optimizing efficiency, ensuring compliance, and tracking transport emissions, we are offering complete visibility and peace of mind for your fleet operations and cross-department team members. Accidents are an unfortunate truth in life and in business. Our goal is to minimize the likelihood that your techs and drivers are the ones involved. And if they are, we want to provide that technology that can exonerate them in a much quicker way with instant video access and reducing the time of your current procedures by allowing streamlined accident reporting from the road to your office. As we all know, the smallest of fender benders to worst case scenarios, accidents create exponential problems for businesses from having your necessary assets, which is vehicle and employee, off the road to the amount of the time it takes with filing claims, settlement costs, raised insurance costs, time, money, time, money, time, money. So our camera solutions provide an incredibly high return on investment, both in time and money saved. So, I uh, want to take a moment, show you a video of one of our customers and their Stephen testimonial. Oh, I'm the that. president and CEO of CW. I'll get back to that one second. So, uh, I'm going to take a moment to show you a video of one of our customers and their testimonial. This company is CW Wright. Uh, some of you may be aware of them. Uh, utilizing both our proprietary cameramatic system and our partner Geotab telematic system uh, for deep telemetry. They'll discuss our interconnected solutions for a complete business and driver experience. So, now let's try that. My name is Stephen Phillips. I'm the president and CEO of CW Right. Our goal across the board has to be zero. It, it, you have to set a, a target, and our target zero when it comes to uh, personal injury or vehicle accidents. You know, it has to be zero. We we can't keep uh, paying these kind of uh, claims uh, and stay in business. We we have to do something to deter that. I see Cameramatics and Geotab helping us take our culture to another level. Uh, we're really big on changing our culture. We have to. A unsafe contractor cannot be successful in this industry any longer. Uh, and I have a saying, you know, we can't be successful unless we're safe. And that uh, that's where we're at. It's the world we live in, you know, you you can't get people hurt and, and think that that's okay. Hi, my name is Chris Lively. I'm our fleet director at CW Wright Construction. We're part of a group of companies. We're part of the largest construction company on the planet. And adaptability is important. When we met with Cameramatics, it was a different approach. It wasn't about what they can do. It was about what we needed. It was the only company who listened to our needs up front and structured what we needed accordingly. 
We chose Cameramatics because of adaptability. We chose Cameramatics for scalability. We chose Cameramatics for a partnership. Cool. That was great stuff. The uh, fleet manager, Chris, said something that was very important there, uh, something I'm very proud of as being a part of the Cameramatics company. It's, it's not about what we can do, it's about what you need. Um, very proud of that. So uh, just to get to basics here, let's talk about the core of what we're solving for. Down to that 30-year-old forklift or excavator that was the start of your business some time ago, uh, all the way to those brand new 2024 Max or Freightliners running across the country. Uh, ultimately, as a business owner, employee, you're trying to solve for these five basic things. Where are my employees and my equipment? I want to keep my insurance costs down. How do I fairly get the most out of how I charge my customers? How best to keep an eye on my growing fleet's maintenance needs and protecting against theft? Then you can get more nuanced help for your businesses like the safety of my team, keeping labor costs down with making sure hours worked or hours paid, and of course, keeping efficient in terms of fuel usage and costs. And we do all of this through all of these capabilities. And I will save you from going through one by one, but live mapping with pass route detection, geofencing for job visibility, preventing personal use of vehicles, theft protection, which we mentioned, uh, billing of those pieces of equipment on sites, fuel consumption monitoring, and so much more. And what most companies are moving towards, AI-driven video telematics. Whether it's mandated for you, fighting for better insurance rates, or being overall proactive instead of reactive. It is so exciting about how this industry has evolved, and Cameramatics is on the forefront of the market horizon. We have an incredible team of thinkers and engineers who are pioneering the ways cameras are used for company fleets. And we're innovating daily to make sure the end user experience is easy to use and thorough for all of your needs. So, as simple as it gets, our goal is to minimize the overall cost of fleet ownership to its lowest possible level. We want to partner with you to make sure you are safe, make sure your assets and data are secure, all while we improve upon your day-to-day -day efficiency and we'll both grow together to be sustainable and scalable into the future. Sum it all up, we are Cameramatics. We have amazing products and technologies, very competitive rates, but they mean nothing without you. Let's work together what your current needs are, and hopefully along the way we can solve for unforeseen needs as well. We do see this as a partnership with each other, customers, large and small, and we have an incredible team that will consult with you from the beginning of our first interactions, train you and your team through implementation, and celebrate you with you with your successes with our solutions. So uh, I believe we're doing questions at the end, so I will pass it over to Mark from Mammoth, and uh, thank you all for your time. Enjoy the rest of the show. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Uh, perfect. Uh, yeah, so good morning to everybody, and uh, welcome to the Mass VOP Breakfast of the Bosch. We're really excited to be a part of this, so Luke, thank you for this opportunity for bringing us over here. Uh, so my name is Mark Shevchuk, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Amos International, Inc. Uh, we are what we'd like to call a third-generation transportation management system, and I will get into that a little bit more throughout this presentation, but for now, what I really want to do is talk about a little bit about my background and why I wanted to get into transportation uh, and really build a TMS, because who really wakes up in the morning and says, I want to build a TMS, right? You have to be a little bit crazy to, to, to do that. So uh, I do come from uh, a background from Ukraine, so my parents did immigrate to the United States in the early 90s into uh, the US, and if you guys don't know, Many times when people come to the US during that time, there's not many opportunities for them to find a job. 
uh, in the US. And the two that really stuck out was construction and uh, logistics. So becoming a truck driver, working in a dispatch office, accounting, whatever it may be. So I really kind of grew up inside all of that culture of seeing really what it meant to be a truck driver, how to uh, you know, optimize your fleet, but really seeing the struggles that they had in their day-to-day -day operations as being a truck driver or a truck company owner. So from the young age, uh, I was able to go to the offices, the dispatch offices, and see exactly how their operations work and really get a lot of influence into uh, you know, getting into the logistics world and in the, into the TMS world. Uh, so from a young age, I always uh, was excited about innovation, technology, and creating things out of nothing. So, uh, you know, eventually we came together with our co-founders and uh, everybody had the same exact vision about the type of uh, product that we wanted to build. And uh, in 2016, we all came together and created Amos International Inc. Uh, so that's, like I said, a little bit of background of what really caused me to go out and uh, create a TMS. But now I really want to talk about what is it about Amos TMS? Uh, what do we do specifically in the market today to help, uh, you know, whether it's a carrier, broker, 3PL, or shipper, uh, to be able to manage their entire operations with one, within what we call an ecosystem, and then eventually take that data within that ecosystem and be able to execute uh, to make the right decisions in their day-to-day -day operations. So uh, the first thing that I do, like I said, I want to talk about is um, what do we do today with carriers, brokers, 3PLs, and shippers? Of course, we're at Matt, so we're going to be talking more about on the carrier side. Uh, what do we do to help in today's current market? And uh, what are we doing for the future in order to help them uh, make future decisions and growth patterns in their company? So the first thing I want to talk about is the scalability and diversification. So almost TMS, like I said, we are a third generation TMS. What does the third generation TMS really mean? Uh, many people are used to the word legacy TMS, so uh, being able to have a system you know, on site, um, you know, a system that has a lot of years of experience and uh, you know, building out solutions, but we wanted to do a couple of things different. We wanted to have a fully cloud-based solution uh, that is access accessible throughout the world and also accessible through your phone or tablet. So wherever you are, whether you are in the United States, you're in Mexico on vacation, or you have a Transportation. Oh, and Mike. Yep. Special. Thank you. Hello. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so we are an enterprise-based uh, uh, transportation management system. So, uh, from a scalability viewpoint, what that means is, as your company is growing, almost TMS is going to grow with you. And this is something that's very important in today's market, uh, because as we see with the marketing conditions right now, a lot of people try to go out and they try to find new opportunities. Uh, to you know, move uh, freight uh, within uh, the market currently. So having a TMS that can go in and say, yes, you can have a trucking company and a brokerage division within one platform is very important. And uh, specifically, if you are, you know, let's say, a broker or shipper, um, the ability to have a fleet aspect to it where you can manage your drivers, trucks, and trailers is something that doesn't come often with a TMS. But at almost TMS, we were able to do that because when we started building uh, the company, we started out with the fleet, right? Because we understood that that was one of the most complex uh, portions of logistics, being able to manage uh, the fleet. And that is something that we went in and really wanted to tackle first before going to uh, the other portions and the, the other uh, verticals within logistics. 
The second thing is uh, diversification. So Amos TMS, we understand that, um, like I said, in today's market conditions is many companies are trying to go out and move from, you know, just the typical OTR, FTL uh, business model. They want to get into partials. They want to get into LTL, reefer, intermodal, whatever it may be. So using the whole thing of scalability along with diversifications, companies can go in and start uh, managing different types of modes of transportations. Uh, within the TMS and this is something that we're really proud of of what we did so like I said whether you are an FTL, LTL, intermodal, even auto carrier transports we have a mobile app that you can go in and scan the VIN of the car and it tells you if it's the correct car you're picking up we were able to put all of that toge together cohesively into one system so that way again as your company grows you're able to grow with us and five years down the line you don't have to go out and start searching for a brand new system and figure out how those two systems are going to work together right now the second point that i want to cover and this is probably one of the most important points when trucking companies are looking for systems or being able to you know think of how am i going to manage my data and be able to execute on that data is integrations. Integrations is one of the most important things that we focused on uh, right from the get-go with Amos TMS. So a little background, we are a microservices application. Uh, so really what that means is uh, the entire system is built like Lego blocks. So if you imagine you have a bunch of different servers, all those servers communicate with each other through integrations. Well, that's the core business of Amos, right? So that gives us a lot of opportunity to be able to go out and create a lot of new solutions so that way carriers can always keep up with the market demands and the way things change, right? So integrations has been a very integral part within Amos TMS. So currently we have over 120 integrations uh, spanning between API, EDI, SFTP, FTP, you name it because we understand that in today's world and also in the future uh, that our customers need to be able to pull in data into the system and also push data out, whether it's to other systems that they are utilizing or to their customers. Without it, you're not gonna survive in this market, right? And especially five, 10, 15 years down the line, for you to even be inside this industry, I believe that integrations is going to be the absolutely number one, uh, you know, piece that you need to provide when you, uh, you know, go into the trucking industry and provide your services to your customers. Now, the third thing that I uh, really want to cover as far as what really allowed uh, Amos to become uh, successful in the, uh, you know, carrier space, but also the other verticals in the, in the market is the people, right? So. With an Amos TMS, we really did a lot of, um, you know, investment in the people that came in as far as the developers go, uh, you know, the implementers, the sales, the customer service, whatever it means, because we understand the market that you guys currently work in, and uh, we understand the high-paced environment and exactly what it takes for you to be successful in this market. So our people have been trained directly from the beginning in uh, the best practices to go in and uh, be able to support the type of work that you guys are doing. And uh, this, you know, a very big portion since we're talking about logistics technology is to be able to have developers, which are very hard to come by, that understand not only a very good development practices, but also very good logistics practices and combine those two together and create a very cohesive and ecosystem uh, that we call Amos TMS. So again, when it comes to, you know, the current market, and in the future for trucking companies, it's very important, you know, what, whatever kind of technology you go after uh, to make sure that it is scalable, that you will be able to diversify your operations within that system, that you will be able to integrate with any system out there so that you make sure that data is coming in, data is going out, and making sure that you have the correct people behind that system that can support you and make sure that you have the growth for the future. Oops, sorry. All right, so the second point I want to talk about, and this is a very important point, is how does Amos uh, use data to make sure that, uh, you know, carriers, trucking companies um, can make the right decisions currently and in the future. So this is kind of going off the first slide that I talked about was with the integrations, is making sure that you have the correct uh, data coming in and out, excuse me, of your system. Uh, but in order to even get to the point of having the correct integrations, you do need to have the cr correct technology in place 
to solve the problems that you have. Because if you don't have the correct technology, um, you know, the whole entire thing is going to fall apart. And what I mean by that is uh, this is something that I talk very often with, uh, you know, in demo environments or with uh, potential clients is that you need to have a controlled process flow when it comes to all of your departments and users within your company. So we'll start, you know, through a typical load process uh, that many trucking companies go through is that let's say you have a dispatcher or an account manager. You receive a new load from your uh, customer and you have to enter that load into the TMS. And when you do that, you have to have a controlled process that says you need to enter this type of data in order to even submit this order, right? Because if you don't have the correct data directly from the beginning, when it goes to the second step, third step, fourth step, and finally to invoicing, billing, and let's say uh, reporting and analytics on it, you're gonna have garbage data directly from the beginning all the way to the end. So with an Amos TMS, what we did is made sure based on all the technology that, the new technology that we entered into the system, that you have a very controlled process flow to make sure that every single individual that touches that load puts the correct information where it needs to be, when it needs to be, so that way at the end, when the company owner or the end users are looking at that data, they can execute on it. Now the second point is that when you choose a technology, you need to make sure that you uh, choose a system that allows you to view the data exactly the way you want to view it, right? Because many times that we have seen is, uh, or you know, potential customers that came to us, is they say, okay, well, I have all this data, I have all these integrations, but I'm not able to view the data exactly the way I want to. Well, that's something that we took very uh, to heart with an Amos and said, okay, well, we're gonna create different levels of visibility so that when, when a trucking company comes in or a broker 3PL shipper, they will be able to take that data, massage it, and be able to see it exactly the way they want to. Because if you have a carrier who's an LTL versus an intermodal, they're gonna wanna see that data very differently between each other, right? So we provided the tools within Amos TMS that allows them to go in and massage that data, including with those integrations, bring it all together, um, and uh, bring it in a cohesive view so they can make the right decisions, which takes me into the point three. Um, well, really, it should have said uh, the uh, execution of the data, meaning that if I am a trucking company and I'm looking, let's say, at the utilization of my truck or uh, if my truck is being profitable at the end of the day, um, I have all the data within the TMS itself and I have all the integrations coming in. So having the right technology to bring in all that data and being able to present it in a way that fits the trucking company's needs, they'll be able to make those tough decisions at the end of the day that say, yes, you will be able to use uh, this truck, maybe you want to replace this truck, um, or maybe you will have to even uh, you know, go beyond and start moving into different modes of transportation as I mentioned earlier. So, uh, that is a very important aspect with an Amos TMS and something that we believe a lot of trucking companies will have to start looking to in the future as far as when it comes to the technology that they're gonna have to be choosing in the future. So the uh, next points that I wanna talk about is really uh, the partnership and uh, you know, connection that we have between Amos TMS and Bosch. Uh, so the first thing is the bigger ecosystem. So uh, as I mentioned, Amos TMS, the way we built the entire transportation management system is we wanted to build an ecosystem where you can manage everything in one place, integrate multiple systems, and have data coming in and out um, wherever you need it or how you need it. And so with the Bosch LOS, this has been a kind of extension of exactly the kind of values that we have within Amos TMS because not only do it, does it allow us to have our own integrations and our own ecosystems, we can now connect to what LOS has to provide to make it even a bigger transfer of data and visibility for all of our customers. Uh, this also allows uh, you know, small to medium businesses to go out and uh, have more access to tools. So if you're starting a brand new trucking company, many times you don't know exactly what's gonna happen or what you need, right? So with an LOS, and uh, along with Amos TMS, you'll be able to get the exact type of technology you need to run your company. And one of the other tools that uh, actually Amos has built is called My Truck List. Uh, My Truck List is a solution that allows trucking companies to, instead of sending Excel sheets of their available trucks every morning, they can connect their TMS with My Truck List so it automatically every morning sends email campaigns saying, here's the list of available trucks, 
do you want to book it and directly from the system they will to be uh, they will be able to book that truck so it really enables the trucking companies to come in um, and have a suite of tools available for them uh, to be able to select exactly the type of solutions that they, they need and the last portion is development uh, which is going back to the first slide about the people is that we really invest into the development research and design and innovation of the TMS or any other solutions that we build in the future. So this is something that we continue to invest in and we're really excited about the partnership along with Bosch and other partners that we have with Anomalous TMS to constantly look at our customers and future customers of what do they need, what is exactly that they're looking for and be able to sit down with them, build that product and make them successful. So in conclusion, this is a, you know, a little introduction that I wanted to do about TMS, about almost TMS, so I appreciate your attention on it, and uh, I guess I'll hand it back to, to Luke. Can you hold on to that? I need the clicker. What is it? I need the clicker. You can hold on to that. I think mine should work. All right, so when I started, I challenged everybody in the room become the tech person, but leverage the people behind the tech. We had a real life example. These same AV guys did this event for us last year and we wanted them this year. Everything with tech doesn't always go well. A microphone goes out, the slides that these guys were looking at down here to see what's behind them didn't match at all for part of it. Tech doesn't always deliver exactly what it should, but if you have the relationship and the trust and the people that are providing the tech, they lined it up, they matched it up. We got a mic for, for Mark. And yeah, it's, it's a corny example, but it's a reality. Because when we start talking about technology and we start talking about how technology can enable your business, it's really easy for the guy with a sport jacket and a cool Bosch pin to say, oh, just become a tech person and embrace it. But there's a lot. I mean, we heard from two of those core pillars of your business in terms of from a telematics side as well as a TMS. And those are only two of those core. There is much, much more. And you know that so well because you're managing your businesses every single day. And so it does take something to tie it together. Otherwise, it is truly an ocean of technology. And it, even if you focus on only those critical core elements, there is still a lot there, and we acknowledge that. And so what we as Bosch did, we said, we know this core of the vehicle at the heart of transportation. What if we put something together, a platform together, to tie these pillars of your business into one view? And I'll explain it a little more, but first, we have a video that can do a pretty good job of that.
right. at its core, LOS, Logistics Operating System. It is a platform for transportation and logistics that can literally connect all of the relevant data across the entire value chain together and make it meaningful and actionable. So those core elements of your business that I'm talking about. What if now the relevant data from those independent systems could come together in a meaningful and actionable way? Now it's no longer this system and this system and this system and a person trying to make those connections and connect those dots, but now a platform that can do it. So at its core, that is LOS. Steve talked a little bit about it in his opening. We encourage everyone to come to our booth over in the West Hall to learn a whole lot more about it and the solutions that are a part of it. But fundamentally, it is this simple. It can help generate revenue, it can help reduce cost and increase efficiency by connecting these different systems together into one platform view. So when I talked about those core pillars of your business, I mean, you can see some of them listed here. We had some information on the telematics, on the TMS side. There's also maintenance management, driver management. Think about this, when I say those core elements and the technology behind those core elements of your business, this is what I'm referring to. In addition to that, those core people in your business, without your dispatchers, you don't have loads. You don't have the communication with your customers and the delivery. Without your maintenance people, your vehicles are not going to indefinitely be on the road. You have core people within your operation that LOS also brings value to, not just at the fleet manager and the, the owner level. And it's looking at this view of the industry that not only were we able to bring a global platform, because that's what LOS is, it's here in the US, it's in Europe, it's even in India, but we we're also able to say, where are some of those points in your value chain that technology could bring a tremendous amount of value? What about those people in your organization that don't have a lot of technology, have a whole lot of industry knowledge, have a whole lot of the relationship piece, and hustle? And how can we help them? with solutions on this platform. And so we developed one. We call it RevX. This is a tool for your dispatchers. And what I mean by that is your dispatchers, I'm gonna, we've been sitting for a while, I'm gonna ask for a little bit of participation. Please raise your hand if your dispatchers have more than one load board that they are on on a weekly basis to try to find freight in the spot market. Okay, keep them up if they're on more than four. Okay, keep your hand up if you have more than eight subscriptions to load boards and relationships with brokerages to try to find freight on the spot market. That's eight different screens that they're in. Could be on a daily basis eight different searches that they're running to try to find the best load. And this is a human being. So what was the best load last week? Hopefully can be found today. Hopefully can be found next week. And then how are they calculating to, to say, yes, this is the best load? They're using a calculator. They're using a spreadsheet. They're using the tools that are in those individual load boards going tab to tab, paper to paper, phone call to phone call, email to email, to try to secure the freight. And this spot market, it is tough. So there are a tremendous amount of loads out there, millions of loads that are posted every single day. And we know how many of those are good loads. We know how many of those we would really want versus the mass that we don't. But that's what's there, and you gotta weed through all that. And your dispatchers today have a tremendous, tremendous challenge because we sat side by side with them and multiple customers.
to see this firsthand. So the effort that they have to go through just to win the load and then actually do their job, because the dispatcher's job isn't to find the load and then walk away. The dispatcher's job is so critical in that communication between the shipper, the driver, the recipient, a third party broker. It's so critical. That's their job, finding the load to put into the, into the truck, finding the freight in the spot market. That's just a necessary requirement to get to what they do best. And so that's what RevX does. It starts aggregating or pulling together loads from different load boards, different brokers. To start, and by the way, when I say to start, the launch for RevX is today, right here on this stage. To start, over 500,000 loads that are searchable on a daily basis. So it's not insignificant. Multiple load boards that we're aggregating together. And that's just the start, because now that means one search instead of five. So now a search can be done, great, what's next? Tools to calculate the actual cost and the actual revenue for that load. In addition to that, tools to make it as quick as possible to win the load. Most loads don't have a one click and win the load. There's a call, there's an email, there's potentially a negotiation that has to occur. And so the quicker to get into that communication, the quicker to win the load. Now, that's where it starts. In addition to that, what we're already working on is go from that one individual load scenario to now, think about it if a dispatcher has a schedule, and most of them do. And it's, by the way, in another tab that they have to look at, where's my equipment, where are my drivers today, and where do I need to get them tomorrow? That's how they're doing the search to find the loads anyway. So what if they could put a schedule together for all of their drivers on a weekly basis? And now they see where those gaps are. And I'll take it one step further because we embrace technology. I became a technology guy. We are working to develop a recommendation engine that will sit on top of this. So now your dispatcher isn't doing the search to find the best load for that specific situation but there's a recommendation to say, this is the best load for you. What do you think, dispatcher? Take the search out of it. Let the technology do what the technology can do and let the human then make the decisions because that's the important part, making the decisions. Because every day, the best load for a situation could easily change. Where does the driver and where does the equipment need to be in three days from now is not always the same. What loads are posted today different than yesterday? In addition to that, making that dispatcher's life easier to find the load so they can get into the dispatching process, what happens? Well, a better load means more revenue. Visibility across multiple sources can make double brokering very visible and much more easy to avoid. If you see a load that's posted on multiple boards and see one from a very reputable source and then one questionable, you know where that load originated. And so you're better protected from double brokering. If the dispatcher is more efficient, they can cover more loads. Brokers have more loads covered, they post more loads. Shippers are able to post more loads. It makes the system better. So not only is it a tool to help the dispatchers, is it a tool to generate more revenue for you? But in addition to that, it just eliminates waste out of the process. And when waste is eliminated from the process, then the shippers are happy, the brokers are happy, and most importantly for this audience, and quite honestly, who we really, really focus on, that's the carriers are happy because they're generating more revenue. That's why RevX is so important for us. And we want it to be important for you. So I said we're launching this thing on this stage. We want everyone to come to our booth 
that is, well, everyone in the room. We want to come to the booth. We want you to register for LOS. You get a jacket. All that, yes. Anyone that is searching the spot market for freight, it'll take five minutes. Let's get you in and your dispatchers into RevX. Try it. No cost, no obligation, because we think that what we've developed will really make their lives easier. For as much as we care about the fleet owners, this tool, unless you're doing the dispatch, isn't for you. This tool is for your dispatchers, to make their jobs better and make their lives better. And then they're bringing more value to you. So I encourage you, everyone, please, I would like to see as many of your dispatchers in RevX, we think there's a tremendous amount of value to you. We really, really do. With that, I want to thank Stephen, Winston, and Mark. This is not easy to be up here to do this and to bring energy and, most importantly, to bring information that's relevant to you guys. So I want to thank the three of you. We're going to transition this into a Q&A, and I'm going to ask Steve to come back up. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your questions. We want to hear your thoughts as well and what we've been talking about. Hello again. So <clears throat> before we get into the q and I'll give you a couple of minutes to, to put together uh, some questions for the panel. Um, I'm going to recap what I thought I heard. So, you know, over the course of my 40 years in the transportation and, and logistics industry, I've seen the use of technology really transition over, over time. Um, when I first started out, we were able to communicate with other terminals. I pounded the dock at Roadway Express as a supervisor and, and got used to, you know, forklift dust in my eyes, ears, and nose. And we communicated by dialing on a party line, so to speak, dialed three, three, three digit number to talk to another terminal in, in, in another state. And I've seen the advance of technology as it relates to dispatch systems and, dub, and warehouse management systems and telematic systems over time. And so I've had a great opportunity at different inflection points in my career to work with companies like a Geotab, like a Cameramatics, like an almost TMS, as that, that, that technology got introduced into how we ran uh, our, our business operations. So what I thought I heard today, uh, uh, as Stephen White you know, walked us through what, what we've seen happen in the last uh, couple of years and, and the advancement of technology from a telematics per perspective, and how Geotab is the world leader in connected vehicle technology. I, I heard uh, Winston talk about how they've taken a outward in approach and listened to the customers and it, it, in, uh, actually in, introduced that into how they've developed their business and created solutions that made a difference in the marketplace. I've heard a similar story from, from Mark as it relates to Almost International and how they've tied it all together and created micro solutions to meet every business's needs from uh, a, a transportation management system and, and related offerings. So, you know, with that, we, we have a couple of individuals that have microphones um, in, uh, that, that can, uh, you know, bring, we can bring to you. Please ask the panel uh, questions. Um, to wrap it all together, and I forgot one of the, the major things, I, I heard that I'm like a general contractor, okay, in working with the logistics operating system. I heard Lo Luke talk about the fact that Bosch LOS is really that roof that sits on top of the foundational elements or the pillars that the geotabs, the cameramatics, the, the almost internationals bring to the table. They, they in and of themselves have their own ecosystem that acts as that foundation for that house. And, and, and the logistics operating system acts as that, that general contractor, so to speak, to bring it all together and to breathe life into it, into the industry. So we also heard about uh, RevX. RevX being that dispatcher and load planner tool, uh, it launches today, and we, we encourage you to find out more about that in, in having that discussion with, uh, with our team. You'll find that it, it will make a difference in how you run your business uh, to help reduce empty miles, 
generate revenue and generate margin for your business. So with that, uh, any questions for, for the panel, please raise your hand and we'll get you a microphone. Okay. Oh, we got one over here. Great. No, I'm fine. We can't hear. Sorry about it. So with TMS and everything, how do you plan to protect our data? Because everything is about data, right? Right. So when we are entering our data, that's mm -hmm. pretty important for a company like us. How do you plan to protect them from data breach or whatever? Right, so there's actually multiple layers that when it comes to data, we understand that it's very important, especially when it comes to, you know, if you have contracted lanes, contracted customers, you wanna make sure that all that data is very protected, right? Uh, so the first thing is making sure that we have the correct technology, like I mentioned before, and all the correct partners, right? So I mentioned that we have a microservices approach to our architecture, so I'm not gonna dive into too much detail, but. What that means is on the back end of the system, we segmented your data. So what that means is every single piece of data is in a different server, and those servers communicate with each other. So even if, let's say, and that's a big if, someone is able to breach one of those servers, it would take another 20 servers in order for you to even make sense of that data. And this is an architecture that is prov uh, provided by um, you know, Amazon Web Services. This is the same thing that the CIA uses, so you have the absolute you know, highest level. Now the second uh, level that I would say is making sure that the internal developers and the internal operations of our side is uh, educated in the best practices when it comes to the security of the system and uh, how they handle the code and how they handle your data, which is something we take very seriously in almost TMS, um, and especially you know, within the past couple of years, even as we were um, you know, doing a lot of the certifications with uh, AWS, uh, you know, we were able to create an architecture and also an environment within our community and our uh, employees to make sure that data is number one and the security of data is number one as well. So hopefully that answers your question. If you, if you have any follow-ups, feel, feel free uh, to ask. Okay, thank I'd, you. I'd like to add a little bit to that as well when we talk about putting a roof on a house of literally all of the data that is your customers are using and you are using to run your business. Uh, at Bosch, we, we also take that very seriously and I'll give the where we started in that data security and data privacy view as well. And that's our core of being a mobility company. When I talked in the beginning about braking systems, steering systems, transmission and, and powertrain systems. There's a tremendous amount of security required in each and every single one of our vehicles to keep them safe so that they're not, literally, so it's not hacked. And it's easy to do if you don't have the proper cybersecurity and data security protocol in place. And that's the foundation of Bosch Mobility, which we then built upon for a transportation and logistics platform. So that is at our core and that was a foundational element of building a platform for transportation because we are those people that ensure that driver systems are not hacked, braking systems are not hacked. And so we brought that same level of scrutiny to a platform for transportation and logistics. So while data, relevant data, has plumbing to move across that value chain, it's incredibly protected. Okay, any, any other questions from the break? Will RevX be pulling from any bulk uh, freight load boards? Yes. Which ones? What I would recommend for anyone that is interested, come to the booth and have a conversation with us to, to see where the detail of the loads that are coming in. I mean, as a starting point, yes, we have some of the large load boards that are, that are uh, part of, of RevX. Into the detail of what loads that are available, we would love to get into that on the, at the booth. Question up front. Oh, yeah. oh, you're too far up front. <laughs> <laughs> your own 
arms are too short. <laughs> My arms. <laughs> <laughs> I come from. Uh, <clears throat> still hold my CDL, owner, operator, company, drive, drove for roadway. <laughs> so uh, I, I come from the perspective of how are you going to educate the driver, the owner, operator, because that's the person the customer sees. That's the person that represents everything you do, everything the customer is shipping the product. They see them as the company. They don't say, oh, it's just a driver. We have a real breakdown in education for the people in the trucks. Uh, there's a breakdown in communication between dispatchers and the drivers and the owner operators. Uh, lack of accuracy. Uh, and in technology, my personal experience, I love technology. I'm challenged by it, I love learning it. But I beta tested uh, ELD when they were gonna be mandated and the company, I said, you know, how do you do this, how do you do that? And they're like, you'll figure it out, okay? And the reason they said that is no one in the company knew how it worked either. No one in the company knew what would happen if something didn't work right or if there was a breakdown. So not to go too long, but that core coaching, learning at the basic level, that foundation, because if it's got cracks, it's gonna crumble. So I'd, I'd like to address that. So, so um, I've run several companies that we've had challenges like that and one, one of the things that we had to embrace is to ensure that that frontline associate, okay, whether it's an owner operator, whether it's a, a, a larger organization that I, I had run as well with 5,000 employees or organizations with 100 employees. You have, to, you have to have that element of what I call change management, okay, where the, the company embraces. The company can be one, two, you know, three employees, but the organization has to embrace change. It has to embrace the, the, the technology. It has to embrace the business processes and the requirements to run that, that company efficiently and in a safe manner. Um, and, and there are companies that we will have that will reside on our platform that specialize in that, that offer those services up, okay, one, one company, strategic partner of ours, I believe they're in attendance today, 10th Street, they, they offer company and, and driver related services, okay, from a, a training, a, a safety, and also a driver recruitment and retention program where, where there, there are uh, specific training needs to, and they can set up specific training programs um, based upon the needs of that fleet. So it's not necessarily a square box and you have to fit into that box. They'll customize an approach for, for that specific need of that specific business. We have other, and this is why uh, we, we call our partners that will reside on the platform strategic partners because we heard a very common story here uh, about having that outward and approach, okay, listening to the needs of the businesses and the customer base, the industry, and how uh, our strategic partners are shaping their business to meet those needs based upon that input, as opposed to creating a, a solution and then trying to push it out in, into the market. And so <clears throat> there, what, it's a common challenge, right? Now, how do you create that advocacy? Well, it really starts with embracing the, the need for that type of change, the need for that type of training. The, the need for participation, you know, and I, we, we've, we've heard a lot, and we hear, we, we hear the, the common theme, and, and um, what I would call maybe a buzzword, uh, ecosystem, right? We've heard that a couple times today. An ecosystem can only really exist if you have true collaboration and participation within that ecosystem, okay, where, where, where you have uh, a community of engagement within that. So 
I, I would suggest that if there are challenges in getting the, the right type of change, the right type of training down, down to the front line, that's going to start with the leadership of that organization to truly embrace that change and truly help make, make that happen and then leverage the right types of resources, the, the types of strategic partners that we have here today to help enable that. I'll add to that as well. Um, a lot of it is finding the right company too. You know, don't go to a telecommunications company if you want telematics. You know, if you want a good ice cream cone, go to Baskin Robbins, don't go to the gas station. You know, and the other part is with our companies, we're trying to make it easy to use as well. So that ease of use for the driver, for the dispatcher, for the owner to understand, uh, that's really important as well. I'd like to comment, yeah. Uh, this is actually an issue that we kind of struggled in the beginning with Amos is, uh, like you mentioned, internally you have uh, employees and TMS is not a small application. It covers a lot of stuff when it comes to a trucking company. So how do you make sure that, you know, from the developers to customer service people to uh, implementers, so on and so forth, that they really understand what the product is and how it works. So, um, yes, we are a you know smaller organization, but this is we use that uh, to a positive because we allow our uh, internal employees to kind of understand cross departmentally how things work. So, if we're doing an implementation of a client, I will pull certain developers to come in and you know not only see how they develop the product, but how is that product applied to the customer, right? And into their operation. And vice versa, if we have a customer service person, uh, pull them into development meetings to understand how the issues and problems of the customer needs needs to be translated into development terms so that way a developer can go in and start developing the product. So I think it's very important you know, within a company, uh, like you mentioned, that if they don't understand you know, how the product works, is uh, start moving people around and you know, including them in other meetings so that way uh, they can see the process from beginning to end when you're building uh, you know, a software. At the end of the day, how is it gonna be applied to the customer's operations? So from our perspective, that's how we do it. Steve, I wanna make one additional comment to what we heard. The, it, get back to in the beginning where I said you know, embrace, become the tech person in the organization. Because if you're able to do that, then you're not speaking to an owner operator as a, you know, a contracted employee, you must do this because the company needs, the, needs to in order to have risk mitigation, cameras in the vehicle, risk mitigation from you know, potential uh, law, lawsuits. <clears throat> That is one approach, and we all know from personal experience what it's like if somebody tells us to do something. Just because you told me so doesn't mean I want to do it. But if we embrace the technology and become the tech person, then we're able to say, here's truly why there's a benefit for you. And here's what it does, and I understand that. I get it. I understand the technology. I'm not just telling you to put it in your truck because you have to put it in your truck, but I understand the technology and here's why it is of value. That can help. Hello. Uh, so I'm Alex, I'm from transportation company. I'm just recently moved to the US two years ago and started to dig in like trucking. Uh, so I I did research uh, between like maybe 10 TMS systems and it was like I, I don't I still don't understand why many companies build their own TMS systems if they can <laughs> buy some so and I started to dig in it and I understood that so we as a carrier we need just one resource to have all the information and uh, for example, if one TM company which makes TMS system says that they have maintenance inside of it, but when we go deeper, one company has just an option to put a unit number, amount of money, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And another company has an option to put a unit number, inventory, parts. Uh, many companies have uh, 
to entities to manage the shop as a different entity mm -hmm. to make invoicing, etc. So, like at the beginning, we had ten, ten companies, and at the end, if we need all those options, we need, we have just one. So, f for Samsara, for example, so company says they have integration with Samsara. So, when we open the integration, we just see. So, guys, you can see location, and for. Uh, MPG, idling, speeding, uh, engine RPM, if the driver could break the engine, you know, if it goes up than 2100 RPM. So we cannot see that without going to Samsara still. So, and all other things, uh, not many uh, TMS systems have integrations with a couple telematics at the same time. For example, many companies, they use uh, Samsara for, I mean, Ukrainian companies, some people like I am from Eastern, Eastern Europeans. So we use uh, Samsara for GPS and uh, Dashcam and Motive as an LD. So many DMI systems um, mm -hmm. don't allow to have both. Right. And we're about to have the third one for a trailer uh, temperature control uh, management. Uh, so, um, I reviewed what type of integration demo systems have, and I didn't see like full in MedStop for pre-employment drug tests, etc. Mm -hmm. Will it have it in the future? Do you know? Yeah, absolutely. So this is what I mentioned earlier: is that. Um, when you have a TMS company, there's a lot of pressure on you that you have to do absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. The expectation almost is that you have to be an ELD, you have to be a maintenance software, dispatch software, driver management, everything, right? But the thing is, you know, there is no thing, such thing as a perfect TMS, right? And I'm not going to sit up here and say that almost TMS is a perfect TMS because it doesn't exist. Now, what can exist when it comes to a perfect TMS, quote unquote, is having the right technology and architecture that I mentioned earlier that you can really build out anything that you want and also have the integrations that you want. So I'm gonna use a great example. This is something that I've seen really in the past two weeks when I've been uh, speaking to a few potential clients is they came in and say, why don't you have an accounting software in Amos? Well, we're not an accounting system, right? Yes, we can go out and I can invest $15 million in creating an accounting system, but is there any way that I'm gonna be able to compete with a QuickBooks Online, for instance. Mm -hmm. No way, never, yeah, for sure. because they're putting in billions of dollars in there. So what can I do from my side? And almost TMS, I can make sure that I have the right technology and architecture to create the best connection possible with QuickBooks and create that buzzword, the ecosystem, where you can have the data going back and forth, right? So kind of going back to the beginning, what I was saying is that there's so much and so much expectations when it comes to a TMS that we just can't do everything right away in one time overnight, right? But we are working, at least on the Amos TMS side, to make sure that every single department within a trucking company does have the correct integrations and correct solutions that they need to manage their entire operations within one place. So yes, when it comes to you know, driver management, you know, the, the, the drug test management, MVR, so on and so forth, that is something that we do have inside there, but when it comes to integration, something that we are working on currently. And we have a few, uh, you know, we, we, you know, they're clients, but we call them more partners uh, that uh, we uh, got a lot of requirements on and we're making those steps forward. So absolutely, it is something that's gonna be available in the future and uh, something that we really look forward to because especially now with the market conditions, you know, with the driver shortages, whatever it may be, it is a very important aspect for a trucking company, and it's a huge initiative that we're putting in on our side. Okay. Yeah. yeah. As a carrier, I just want you to, like, when you make the integration, just do, do not put one option and mark, you, we have it, so. <laughs> <laughs> and no, that's absolutely. What they meant. I mean, if you look on the website, I'm sure you were just looking at it uh, on your phone. It, it tells you exactly the data that goes in and out, but. Uh, no, we're, we're not saying that, you know, and I'm, I'm everybody else on the panel as well, it's not just a simple, you know, check mark, yes, we have, and then, you know, go figure it out. Uh, you know, everybody on this panel, you know, we all work together, and especially, you know, almost with Bosch, we try to make the best solutions, we try to make sure that the data is there that you guys need. And uh, the thing is, you know, you use Samsara as an example. 
If you look at the API documentation for Samsara, it is pages and pages long. There's so much data that you can pull in, right? Um, and it's something that we're working in, you know, making strides forward with every single integration partner to make it better and better every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, very last question, yeah. when, when, uh, when you were talking about uh, uh, DAT, like load boards, uh, as a, so I was a part of this page and uh, my question is, if the load posted on DAT, sometimes when it's just posted, we're calling and the load is already gone. Uh, so yeah. how, if it goes from DAT to your platform and then I make a call using like Ring Central, it's m more like, more like it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be. You're worried that there's a, there's a delay, there's a delay that it's not sure. gonna be the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, Mark and Amos are a development partner f uh, with us for RevX, but you know, I need to walk the talk. I even had it on a slide about becoming, you know, embracing the technology. So I'll, I'll answer this one, or I'll address that. Uh, we're not pulling all of that data from one source into another source and then showing that result. We're pulling that search live from each of those, those data sources, so from the load board itself. So when the search is initiated, just like it would be initiated in each screen that search is being initiated at the same exact moment in RevX. And therefore, the literal half or nanoseconds to take for that search result to come back is as, as fast, if not faster, depending on the server quality of the load board itself. Thank you. Speed is imperative. Then Tim, who you actually just handed the microphone to, came up with a great tagline for RevX, the fastest way to win the load. Did you want to address Yeah, that? I was just going to say, just to kind of answer your talk with the telematics piece of it. Um, now, first of all, Samsara is a great competitor, so nothing, nothing against Samsara. Um, but we, we definitely have two different approaches. So we have Geotab as a philosophy of being a completely open platform. So we play nice with everybody. So being whatever camera provider you currently have, generally we'll integrate with that camera provider. So you don't have to change that hardware. Um, if it's a maintenance system, you know, there may be a great maintenance system used today. Tomorrow there may be a better one that comes out. So instead of you being dependent upon what I have to offer you, you can pick what's best in class that suits your business, the absolute, the absolute best. We have customers from the US government, the GSA contract we won three years ago, um, just got extended another three years, thankfully, is, you know, the most dependent upon data and having those different resources, all the way down to single truck operations that we, that, we, that we have and everything in between. So being able to have that open platform is vital for you to be able to future-proof your business the way you need it to operate, not just rely on what Geotab or somebody else is going to give you to operate with. We're fully customizable, so uh, like I say, our APIs are fully open. You can go on, we've, our SDK is public, um, so which is very unusual. You usually gotta have an NDA or even if that, to, to be able to get access to it. So that's how open we are, not just as a platform, but with information to it. So we just concentrate on being the best platform we can. It's hard to be the jack of all trades. You know, I can't make the best camera. I can't make the best platform. I can't make the best maintenance system. I can't make the best DMS. I gotta pick one, and that's what we concentrate on. So we're that platform for all these to go into. And again, that's how we align so well at Bosch with LOS, is we can take all these different systems that, you know, within your ecosystem to be able to be able to do that and have you, you know, one pane of glass to be able to see, be able to see this. And that's that's what's vital. Um, you know, we were talking about AI earlier. You know, we have all this data and information. Well, where do you think that's gonna be five years from now? We have no idea. And if we don't have any idea, I don't think anybody's going to. Um, unless you got a really good crystal ball. And if you do, I want the <laughs> mega millions that's coming out. But, um, you know, that is, that's the key of no matter what size business you have is be able to have it so you have the tools that you need to operate, not just what I give you um, as a telematics provider. 
Um, another important piece, uh, I don't know if she's still here, the young lady, she asked about the, the security. Security is paramount. And, and just to cover this real, real quick, and I wanted to cover it earlier, but we changed the subject real quick, was either from a personal security or cybersecurity is absolutely vital um, to us. And this again, you know, <coughs> having the US government as our largest customer is a large part to do with that. Every customer's information is on their own individual database. So we secure it that way. When we benchmark, all that information is anonymized. So you can't tell who's running where, what company is running, running where to it. Um, and everything we send back and forth is encrypted. Um, and that goes to either you know, our partners or to you, know, you the, 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 the end user of that, of that information. And going forward, as data becomes more paramount to our daily lives, as it, even more so than it is today, um, that becomes more critical. And I always tell people, you know, take a look at how people secure your data. Make sure they have a public document that specifically states how they store, use, possibly share your data. Um, GM is going through hell right now um, because they kind of had a third party that sent some data out that shouldn't look at those. Um, we have a public document when it comes to cybersecurity. We take it very seriously. Um, and I, I really tell you to, to, do, to do the same. Hello, uh, my name is Dimitri Samsonov. I'm a uh, owner operator with owner authority out of Appleton, Wisconsin, Signature Freight. Uh, I see tremendous value in what you ha uh, have to offer as a TMS. Um, uh, one of my uh, biggest challenges is uh, uh, finding a quality dispatcher. Uh, last year, because of the market conditions, back in a few years ago when market were, uh, how to say it, uh, easier, uh, it was a lot easier to find for a dispatcher to find a good load. Uh, lately, I've been dispatching myself because last year I, I replaced 13 Literally, not figuratively speaking, literally 13 different dispatchers uh, because none of them met my picture of how I see a dispatcher working for me. And plus, um, I find myself uh, oftentimes looking for a load. So I deliver freight uh, early in the morning and oftentimes I look for a load all day long to find a decent, at a decent, at a decent, not a good, not a good, a fabulous rate, decent rate. Uh, oftentimes it doesn't happen, I have to relocate, uh, sometimes 700 miles away. Uh, that had to, uh, not, not to hold for 1, 1.1, 1.7 for a refill load, for, for full truck refill load. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, my question is, uh, I see value, uh, what uh, you guys said about uh, putting all those different log boards into one and be able to uh, uh, book that load quick. Uh, do you guys work with owner operators? Uh, uh, another, my big challenge right now is um, I'm one, <clears throat> one person in my company and uh, it's like, I always compare it's like a a transition period between truck driver, owner, operator, and already a fleet owner that later, hopefully, when the market gets better, I can start hiring people, hire owner, operator, hire full-time uh, bookkeeper, and scale up and st stop driving and already manage my fleet. Uh, so, um, do you guys work with owner operators? And uh, is there a way you help uh, small companies scale up and start uh, uh, assist with that transition between doing all the work yourself and mm -hmm. uh, delegating to start hiring people, delegating to more people. Thank you. Let me start. Absolutely. Absolutely. So <clears throat> first, at the heart of the dispatch. So RevX is absolutely designed for owner operators. Anyone anyone that is in the spot market looking for load. It doesn't matter the size of the fleet, one to 10,000. If you're in the spot market looking for loads, RevX is a tool for you, absolutely. 
And then to take that now one step further of trying to do everything. So dispatching, maybe even driving, light maintenance, uh, managing the books, the lead accountant, dealing with, with any of the contractual obligations, the customer service rep, I mean, the number of roles that you're talking about that you're doing, running a small business is significant. And so LOS is of value to you because it helps the small guy act like a larger organization. Both Steve and I worked for Schneider National. That's where I started my career in logistics. Steve was an executive there for years. We know the amount of investment that the big guys do every single year, millions of dollars, to connect data across their own systems. And that's what LOS can do for the medium and the small guy. Connects relevant data across that service network, across those strategic partners to make you feel and run, be able to run your business like those big guys. So, and to, you know, you heard the term scalability, flexibility, diversification. These are all common themes that each one of our strategic partners that have those pillars, those, those foundational areas that will exist within the LOS umbrella, the LOS um, roof over top of that house, what it brings to the table. And it'll allow you, that, that small to medium-sized business owner, to compete with the big guys. And that's kind of the, the whole premise behind, behind it. How do we create that level playing field? You guys should add to your tagline, LOS, large or small. Uh, hi, um, I have a question for RevX. Um, uh, I know I own a trucking company and we have outsourced, like we have our office in three countries. Uh, in Turkey, Istanbul, we have one in Ukraine and we have one in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, where we have about 60 employees. Uh, right now, uh, DAT and Highway, they are not allowing those employees to access the boards and like web services. Will, are you going to allow people from outside of the country like access the, your web services, like LOS, Rapix, and all this stuff? That's my question. I didn't all right. <clears throat> so, as I said, LOS is a global platform that Bosch has launched, and it's one cloud-based platform, so it's the same platform. Uh, the regions in which we operate currently are in North America, specifically in the United States, in uh, Europe, as well as in India. So for the relevancy of the solutions, you know, it's very targeted here for our North American business, and Europe for the European business, and then India likewise. Because the way those markets operate, uh, the, the solution providers, in those markets in many cases are different. And so local solutions for local market conditions are very important. And so it's a matter of what's the relevancy. If there is relevancy for a customer that may be a global logistics provider that has operations in Europe as well as in North America, then they're finding solution that does cross those two continents. But in most cases, the LOS of Europe is servicing Europe, LOS in North America for North America. So it's really about the relevancy of the solution and the customer. Where are they located? That drives the participation of LOS. And one day when I can sit back and after, you know, take a breath and have a vacation and say, okay, what's next? then North America can become Latin America for us over here in the Americas. Uh, and in Europe, they can continue to expand, and likewise in, in Asia. But that's, a, that's down the road. Uh, LOS for a, a realistic roadmap is focused on those regions in which we operate today. 
because we want to continue to add the value. We want to truly make it the spot for the small carrier, the small business owner, to have everything that they could want from financing to put a vehicle on the road through the operations, the connection to the telematics, the service offering that go on top of that telematics to the transportation management systems, the fueling, the tires, the driver management, the maintenance management, all the way to end of life of that vehicle, to auction, to resell, having truly that one spot for a company to be able to manage their business on a platform in that region, that's where our focus is. Okay, and I have one more question. Um, as you know, DAT right now, uh, there are a lot of scammers and like fraud, like fraud brokers who are posting loads like let's say under the name of the Schneider. Uh, we see it every day and are you gonna like somehow like defend or uh, like protect carriers and owner operators? For example, some maybe like we have a driver who recently became owner operator and he like booked loads for 20, almost $25,000 last month and all of them were like fraud, like fraud loads. Uh, the, guy, the guys, I don't know from outside of the country or inside, they are posting like loads, double broking the loads and using the ni name of the Schneider, TQL and like all, all of the big brokers. And I, I, I just have a question, how, how are you gonna protect people from like owner operators and carriers from the, from the scams? I didn't hear all of the questions, so let me repeat that yeah. to make sure that I understand it, and please correct my understanding if it's not. All right, are you asking how, we are, how is RevX going to ensure that there aren't, uh, there aren't companies, people, from outside of the U.S. that are booking loads and then re, then rebrokering. Uh, no, uh, people like let's say, Rebix is a load board, right? So where the carrier and owner operator is gonna book and take the load. Um, how are you gonna protect the carrier or owner operator from booking like this the load that is like double brokered, triple brokered, or like posted by the scam company? Okay, yep, so to the, to the double brokering topic, and it's a very good one, it, the value of, of seeing loads on multiple, from multiple sources, seeing loads uh, aggregating together from multiple load boards as well as, as brokers, uh, you can see where a load was originally posted, and you see the, the source, because in many cases you have to you know, negotiate, even if it's a click, to accept a load that's still a negotiation. So you see where the loads are posted and if they are posted in multiple, the same load is posted multiple times, you can see that together. So that you see who is posting those loads. So if a very reputable broker is posting a load and then that same exact load is posted by Stephen and Luke's truck and shoe care emporium, you know that the reputable broker posted that load, and there's a pretty good likelihood that Stephen and Luke's shoe emporium double brokered that load. So you have the visibility and the transparency to see because both postings would be together. Anybody else? I mean, I just wanted to explain what he was saying. So basically, um, we have an issue with dispatch management, which is like overseas. And that is why most of the companies, load boards, they kind of created that even if you are like a dispatcher, you cannot approach any load boards if you're overseas. That is what he was asking in a sense of how you will overcome that, because we have a dispatch system also from Europe, right? And that is why, um, keeping in mind that the RevX, you will implement all the load boards on one platform, right? Mm -hmm. And you will kind of um, decrease possibility for anyone in, in all over the world to as assess those load boards, right? That is why they did it. Because on the load boards, if you can post anything and you can see everything, you can do many things that are not supposed to be done. The things that you are saying, it's not double brokering, it's actually 
they are representing themselves as a Schneider, but that's Schneider at Gmail, you know? Mm. It's a scam email. And you're booking loads with them, and you're holding for them, and they get paid, but you never get paid. But that's something that you cannot do anything about. That's actually something that load board has to do. And that is why they came up with solution to do like approach only in United States. You can approach load boards only in, if you are in United States. Of course, we have VPNs for those things. But if you do Revex, VPN is not usable. I don't know how to explain that. No, you're, the, the situation which you're explaining, we do understand. Actually, one of the, the most important customers that we have, uh, where we actually used his wall, Milo sitting in the front row here, we took pictures down off of his wall in the conference room in Chicago and whiteboarded out or posted, noted out, RevX. And this is one of the topics that we were even discussing back then and, and how to architecture this. So you, the, the issue that you're raising is understood and known. And yes, it isn't, uh, it, it isn't specifically to double brokering. That is one problem. You're addressing another problem. And with the collaboration that we have with the load boards, because that, the, it, you know, they're a critical element of this. We are not replacing load boards. We are partnering with load boards to aggregate the data that they have into one view. That's the starting point of RevEx. So we're not replacing them. So we're working with them to increase the transparency and be able to address and tackle some of these problems, like double brokering, like what you're talking about, stealing or phishing for the loads. Yeah, but on the other hand, um, they are fighting with that by uh, implementing that you can book loads only from United States. With Revex, I think that you can book load even if you're on a vacation in Thailand. So to, to you know? go one step further into, into the solution, uh, you have to have that access to a load board. You have to be part of a broker's network. Of course. In order to see those loads. Of course. So again, back to the point, we aren't physically digitally in the cloud, physically, pulling every single load into one server, and then that's the server that you're using to search, and so it's open. You have to have access to the load board. You have to be a part of the broker's network in order to see those loads that they would be posting. Yeah, we're So that qualification yeah. has occurred. At the moment, we are a part of 10 load boards, and some of my people from outside the United States, they are not able to approach all of them, only the people in the United States. With Revex, yep. I think we'll be able to approach all of them even though we are in Europe. Again, it's the access that you have to the load board that dictates your, your ability, what you can do. So what I would ask or recommend if you do have the time, Laura is standing literally right behind you and Hannah do the microphone, and she can go into a tremendous amount of detail of what loads are being aggregated, as well as show you what view you see and the functionality that you have, as well as then the functionality that is required in order to be able to access the data of those loads. Thank you. Hi, so I'm an owner operator. Um, got my authority last year. And one big thing for me is like, I got Samsara because I was sold on the fact that you can um, see all your truck data and you can see your service data, all, all of this different data. But when I go into their application, I can, I, like for example, last year I was fighting this and I stopped using their application for fuel completely because they made you put in a bunch of different fields. They, it was like you couldn't, I cared about state and where, like, where I filled up, what time, just those basic things, but they wanted all these addresses that you had to put in. And it just, it took five minutes to enter in an invoice. So I just didn't want to do it. And then I go in there and look at, so like my 
I guess, efficiency, driver efficiency, truck efficiency, whatever you want to call it, in Samsara, it'll give me, my, as a driver, um, F rating. I mean, because I'm, I'm always on the throttle, and I don't care about that. What I care about is seeing my fuel economy so that I can see from a, a service standpoint, like, did an intercooler go out? You know, did I lose a mile per gallon consistently on this tank, on this date, to know, okay, did I put a different driver in that truck, or did, is there a service issue? So is AI going to be able to um, take like some of the things like when I want to put an invoice into, let's say, QuickBooks, where I want to put on all my, um, like all the different parts I added to that truck on this date. Is AI going to be able to translate that to my, to my um, telematics stuff, whatever, uh, I, I don't know all the different applications, but is AI going to be able to translate that all and enter in data? I, I guess I don't know exactly what I'm asking because AI is kind of new, and, but is AI going to be able to take that spot where it's going to be able to commute, take everything and put it all together? Yeah, so, so I'll, I'm going to answer, answer that. So. The answer is yes, and there's actually technology today that is partly AI enabled, but, but also data enabled through the, the integrations with certain offerings like a, a GeoTab. And <clears throat> part of the LOS ecosystem is a sub ecosystem. It's a maintenance management ecosystem that captures that vehicle data, okay, and then accumulates that and does several things with it. it. It will provide you with those basic types of metrics that matter, the mat and it's configurable. So whatever data that matters to you, it will capture that data and make it relevant to, to what you want. But also, it will, it will accumulate that data and then predict, hey, based upon this certain behavior, okay, hey, your driving behavior, you've you know, you, you were over speed 50% um, of the time, and you're hard braking 35% of the time. And, you know, based upon that type of driving behavior, it's going to result in this. Okay, so AI can help enable that type of predictive type analysis that, that you're looking for. And so um, part of the, our, our maintenance management sub ecosystem has solutions that can help and enable that and develop those metrics that matter to you based upon those relevant data, uh, data resources, especially integrations with, with solutions like a GeoTab, like a, a, a Cameramatics, like a TMS solution, like Amos, because all of those data sources can potentially feed into that, okay? I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I mean, so do you, do you think AI, do you think AI is going to um, be the future of that? Or do you think it's still going to be where I'm going to have to enter in data into this system and this system and this system to get, because right now, like, my time, you know, it's, it's valuable. And if I spend, I can spend several hours on one truck entering data a week. Is AI going to be able to take, if I enter it into, like, my fuel into this system and this into the whatever, you know, where I have to enter it once, is AI going to be able to take the place of me entering it? In you, you, you're really looking for a predictive type and analysis based upon what if scenario. Well, I know, is that I, what I, I'm hearing? I, well, like, if I, if Amos needs certain data, okay, and Sam Sarah needs certain data, and all these different systems are separate. But Bosch is kind of connecting them. No. I want to enter at one time yeah, and have it go to right. everywhere that I need it to go to. So, so as, as, as you are looking at a variety of solutions that would reside on the LOS platform, you're, you're subscribing to, to them through our platform. You have one integration. Those solutions will be integrated together. So you you will not have to 
have separate integrations with all of these different solutions. Through the platform, you have one integration. Does that make sense? So, yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, you need some sort of like transportation management system, right? Whether you're an owner operator, 10 truck company, 50 truck company, doesn't matter. Now the scale at what you needed, you know, that differentiates depending on what type of work you're doing. But what you're asking is, I have a lumper receipt, I have this receipt, I upload it, the system is able to read it, pull that data and put it exactly where it needs to be, right? Right. And that's what you're asking yes. about. So yeah. That's something that, you know, when I mentioned at the beginning of the, my presentation was creating that ecosystem where you can have all those different connection endpoints where if I do this, then do this. You know, a lot of people like to say AI, you know, I don't want to downplay the power, uh, power of AI, but uh, sometimes it's very simple as saying, if this happens, then make this happen, right? So if I upload a fuel receipt, then upload it to my ELD or, you know, this system, whatever it may be. Um, and, and that technology is already readily available, you know, even with uh, almost TMS. And especially when we start looking at, you know, the expansion of that ecosystem with LOS, you know, with uh, the integrations with Geotabs, Cameramatics, whoever else it is, uh, LOS will basically bring that together where I can say, all right, I have this ecosystem here, here, here. I upload the data. Now, how do I make all those connect? And that's that roof that we, uh, you know, they kept mentioning. So it's a... Uh, I'll be quite honest, it's a little bit more simpler than you think it is, right? I think you're overcomplicating it in your head a bit, and that's okay, right? It's just simply making sure that you find the solution that I kept mentioning that can handle the type of data transfer because integrations, quite honestly, is number one for the trucking industry right now and in the next five to 10 years. So if you pick a solution can, that can do integrations, then you'll have your problem solved. Okay. And, and to help you with AI, think of AI as the disk on steroids. That's really what it is. AI is like statistics. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> the, best, the easiest way to describe, in a, in a few words. Uh, well, folks, thank you very much. You know, we, we're a little bit o o over time, um, so I'd like to, you know, thank the panel for your participation and time. I'd like to thank everybody in the audience for for attending. Um, uh, it, you know, it's been a great show. And just as a, a, a reminder, please, you know, do, do a couple things. Number one, uh, please register on, on the LOS platform. Uh, once you register, visit our booth. Um, you'll have the opportunity then to, to uh, get a, a, a Bosch jacket, and then your name will be entered into a, a raffle for a Bosch uh, po power tool set, uh, number one. Our booth is um, in the West Hall, uh, 65410. Actually, when you enter the West Hall, look in the middle and you'll see the Bosch sign right in the middle. You can't, can't miss it. Um, and then please sign up for a RevX should you need um, that dispatcher and, and load planner tool. It, it will make a difference in how you, how you manage your business. So with that, thank you very much. Have a great show and hope to see you soon.